Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here, and this is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. First off, let me say thank you for letting me be a part of your journey. I'm just so excited. I can't wait to see what the future brings for you and for us as a community. With that being said, if you guys could, if this channel's helping you, encouraging you, could you guys please today... Uh, help me out and if you guys could share your favorite video on all of your social media platforms whether it's a throwback video or the electricians in action whatever it is if you guys could do that for me it would mean a lot and i really appreciate it all right so let's go ahead and get right down to the action so i want to talk to you guys today about finding your torque spec inside of your panels Okay. First, we're going to talk about breakers, and then we're going to talk about the rest of the lugs inside of the panel. So anytime you're dealing with a breaker, regardless of what it says right here, you're going to terminate whatever the breaker says. Sometimes this will conflict with what the breaker says. The breaker supersedes what this panel says. So right off the rip, if you're dealing with a breaker, and I've got a 90 amp breaker right here, and I want to show you guys. So right on your breaker, sometimes it's listed here on the side. Oftentimes it's listed right here on the front. This one's got a little bit of mud on it. It's brought in straight from the field. Hopefully that thing will autofocus back here. There we go. And get it right in action here. So if you look here, it right here, we're looking right here, so you guys know. It will tell you for one what size wire this breaker will accept. You cannot jam every size wire into every breaker. So first off, right off the rip, find out what size wires this breaker takes. There's no point in trying to shove the wire in there. Typically it just won't fit. I use this 90 amp breaker for a reason to show you guys that there's a range. So right here on the left hand side, you'll notice that it, you can do in between, you can do from six all the way up to two odd in this breaker. Okay. With that being said, the six to four gauge range, you're going to torque it to 45 pounds. The three to two odd range, you're going to torque it to, it's kind of small writing there. It looks like 60 pounds. Can't tell if that's a six or eight. I believe it's a six. Let me get it up here in my eyes here. Mm. That thing is so smudged together. That looks like an 80, guys. Not going to lie. Maybe a, uh, maybe a misprint, but it looks like an 80 to me. So it's going to jump all the way up to 80 inch pounds. So jumps all the way from 45 all the way up to 80 from three gauge and up. And I'll check a second breaker to see if it's 60. But regardless of what it is, you do whatever the breaker says. Okay. So with that being said, whatever the breaker says is what you're going to do. So right here on this breaker, regardless of what this panel cover says or if it's listed inside of the can, you're always going to follow what the breaker says. Now, it goes for the main breaker, sub breaker, single pole breakers, doesn't matter. Always follow what the manufacturer has listed on the breaker. So, with that being said, what do we do for the rest of the bars? What if I have a main lug panel? Now, the first thing that I do anytime I'm looking for torque specs is I'll find the A, B, and N. So if I don't have a main breaker and I'm terminating to the lugs, I'll find where it typically, if it's single phase, it'll say A, B, and N. With that being said, Right down here, it's going to tell me some information. So I come down here, lets me know what type of co uh, conductors I can use, and it gives me the range that these lugs accept. That wire will not legally accept all wire gauges. It will not accept anything less than a 4 or anything larger than a 2 odd. So with that being said, it's also, I'm going to read down through here, and it is going to let me know that I've got to torque it to 45 inch pounds. So that covers my A, my B, and my N. Well, what about the ground bars and the other bars? Some panels that have a lot more terminations will have more of these lists. This one is a small sub panel, so it has A, B, and N, and then the neutral bar, which you're also going to be using as the ground bar, depending on your you know first point of disconnect or not. With that being said, if you just read it just like it reads. You take your time when you read this stuff, slow down, and you just look at the, it lets me know right here that it takes 14 gauge wire all the way up to number four. That's helpful. So I'm not trying to, you know, shove a number three in there. I'm going to have to get a collar strap or another means or another ground bar with a bigger lug. And it also lets me know what my torque spec is. So I just tee off. So I come over here and I tee over and I come up and I find that if I want to do a six gauge conductor, it's going to be 35 pounds. I find here if I want to do a four gauge conductor, it's going to be 45 pounds. Now you may have several of these lists on your panel, depending on how many lugs there are, but every single lug has a torque spec. Sometimes this will tell you um, to either C main breaker or it will list a torque and sometimes it actually conflicts with what's on the breaker i recommend that you do what's on the breaker 
Now, never repeat anything in these videos, just use them for educational purposes. But um, if it were me out in the field, the breaker trumps the panel. Okay, so the breaker has been manufactured and been listed. This breaker has been listed by UL or ETL or one of the other companies to hold that pound and be correct. So the breaker to me is going to supersede what's inside the can. This is the electrical code coach. This is the electricians in action. Let's go ahead and get to it, y'all.